Hi, I'm Klaus Hermann from farbfilphoto.com. In this hands-on photo tip, I will show you how to retouch a photo without actually touching its pixels. Now that may sound like magic, but it's actually very simple and it gives you great flexibility in your editing workflow. When you edit a photo, you often have to remove things like litter and dust using Photoshop tools like the Clone Stamp or the Spot Healing Brush. And many people apply these tools directly to the image pixels, changing the original data that the camera recorded. Now, that's why it's called destructive editing, because you're actually destroying the data that you loaded into your image editing software in the first place. And when you edit a photo destructively, you're making it hard or even impossible to undo or revise these changes in your workflow later on. And this limits your flexibility and can make you spend more time on a photo than you actually need to. This is where non-destructive editing comes in. Non-destructive editing or non-destructive retouching includes a wide range of tools and techniques that lets you edit your photo such that you can undo each edit individually. In this tip, I will concentrate on a simple trick for removing distracting elements from your pictures. The trick here is to apply whichever tool you're using for this task to an empty separate layer in Photoshop. Now this has a number of advantages. You can turn these editing layers on and off at any time, giving you the ability to undo the respective edits independently from any other changes. You can create several versions of your edits and decide which one is best later on. You can revise your edits partially without having to start from scratch. And last but not least, you don't need to duplicate any of your full image layers, which keeps your files small. Here we have a photo that I shot at a popular tourist location in Germany. It's a real shame that people have no respect for the places they visit and in this case they've littered a World Heritage site. In Photoshop you can actually clean this up pretty easily. Now before I show you the non-destructive way of removing things from your photos, let me show you how it's done destructively. You see that I've got the image open here in Photoshop and that I've got the background layer here which is called image in my case and the first thing that I would be doing is hitting Ctrl J to create a background, a copy of the background layer where I can work on. Then I would be picking the spot healing brush here, zoom into 100% and then go to one of these spots that I would like to work on. I would choose a nice and soft brush tip and then make sure that you select the right option up here in the options bar. I always prefer the content aware setting which is a setting where Photoshop tries to fill the spots that I'm trying to heal as best as it can to create seamless transitions to the rest of the image. And then what I'm actually doing is I'm pasting gently over these spots one after the other and Photoshop fills them with the correct pixel data. Now the problem with this is that if you want to undo any of these changes, you have to go back in your history I'm doing this by pressing Ctrl Z on the keyboard and you see all those spots appearing again. You can do this in reverse order to make them disappear again, but there's no way of really picking out any particular edit that you've done and undoing it. You could of course in this case uh, grab the eraser tool or create a mask to mask the parts of the upper layer and to let the original image shine through. But that's, that's really inconvenient and it's not necessary to have two copies of the image for doing this. So let's get rid of this editing layer that we've just created. I'm just dragging that to the trash bin. You see that all the spots have appeared again. And now I'm going to show you how to do this non-destructively. And the first thing that you would like to do is create a new layer. And you're just simply doing this by clicking on this create layer icon here on, at the bottom, just to the left of the trash bin. And that creates an empty new layer. So if I uncheck this background image here, you see that there's nothing on this. It's completely transparent. And if you now grab your spot healing brush, again with a nice soft brush tip, we've already have this, and you paint on one of these spots, nothing's happening. And you may first think that this is not working at all. But there's one little detail that we forgot to do here and that is to tick the sample all layers checkbox up here. Because that tells Photoshop 
to take into account everything that's below the layer that it's painted on when we apply a tool. In this case the spot healing brush would then take the pixels from the layers below and try to heal the spot that we paint on. So now if I select this empty transparent layer and paint on these spots with the spot healing brush you see that just as before all the spots disappear nicely. Photoshop for the most part does a great job of filling these spots with pixel data that resembles the, the pixels around the hole very nicely. And if I uncheck the background layer you see that we now have a layer with only the edits on it. So you only see these patches where I've painted over the uh, litter on the original image. With this type of non-destructive editing you're actually not limited to a single editing layer. You can at any time create a new transparent layer on top of the already existing ones and keep on editing other parts of the image. So let me just scroll on to a different part here which is also which also has litter on it and I'm just brushing on these spots with the upper layer with the new second layer selected and you see if I turn off these other layers here the new edits reside on this layer too. And if I, if I activate the first edit layer that we had here, you see that the, these other edits reside on the other layer. So that's a nice way of um, keeping different edits individually on different layers so that you can turn on and off different sets of edits independently from each other. Apart from turning individual editing layers on or off, you can even work on any of these layers individually. So let me just grab out the first layer that we chosen here and activate the eraser tool. Now I have to activate this layer that we want to erase. I'm increasing my brush size and now you can re uh, remove any of these edits just by erasing the pixels which effectively means that the original image pixels will start shining through again and this is effectively an undoing of the edits that we've been doing. And please note that we're not using the, the, the undo key for doing this, but we can do this at any time throughout the workflow. It's not, it doesn't have to be done in any particular linear order and we are very flexible with doing this. Another very nice thing that you can do if you edit your images in this way is that you can change the opacity of your editing layers. So if I go to the opacity setting here and set the opacity down, you can see that these spots that we've been removing gradually appear or disappear. So we can blend in different edits into each other um, non-destructively, which you couldn't do if you were just working on a single image layer, because you would always uh, change the opacity of all the pixels of the layer. So once you're happy with your edits, you can just go and activate all the editing layers together with the image layer, select them by holding down the shift key and clicking on the first and the last one, and then simply right click on them and say merge layers. And now you have an image with all the edits baked into the pixels again. So that's, if that's what you want, if that's what you need for your following, following editing steps, you can do that at any time. As you've seen, non-destructive retouching helps you retain full control over your edits all along the way. At any time you can do things like create different versions of an edit, undo or revise edits independently from each other, or change the opacity of edits to change their strength. This will make your editing work really efficient and enjoyable, and on top of that, it helps you keep your files small, which can save a lot of storage space and time. That's it for this hands-on photo tip. If you've enjoyed it, if you found it useful and interesting, simply click on this link here and sign up to our newsletter. You will get all the news, tips and tricks fresh off the press and there's even a free gift waiting for you, so make sure you check it out right now. I'm Klaus Hermann, thanks for watching.